Hey everyone, today is, well, today's July 20th, I believe. Check my, yep, July 20th. Uh, we didn't get to July 19th yet, so today we were going to, we're going to read July 19th. Um, I'm hoping to get through July 19th and July 20th during this evening's readings. So, let's start with July 19th, 2 Chronicles, chapter 1. Romans 14, Psalm 1, or sorry, Psalm 18, 1 through 24, and Proverbs 19, 24 and 25. Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 1. Solomon, the son of David, established himself in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him and made him exceedingly great. Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the commanders of thousands and of hundreds, to the judges and to all the leaders in all Israel, the heads of the father's houses, of fathers' houses. And Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for the tent of the meet, of meeting of God. Uh, sorry, let's start that sentence over. Uh, verse 3. And Solomon and all the assembly with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for the tent of meeting of God, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness, was there. But David had brought up the ark of God from kiriath Jerim to the place that David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. Moreover, the bronze altar that Bezalel, Bezalel the son of Uri, son of Hur, had made, was there before the tabernacle of the Lord. And Solomon and the assembly sought it out. And Solomon went up to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the tent of meeting, and offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. In that night, God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said to God, You have shown great and steadfast love to David my father, and have made me king over in his place. O Lord God, let your word to David my father be now fulfilled, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me now wisdom and knowledge to go out and come in before this people. For who can govern this people of yours, which is so great? God answered Solomon, Because this was in your heart, and you have not asked for possessions, wealth, honor, or the life of those who hate you, and have not even asked for a long life, but have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may govern my people, over whom I have made you, made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you. I will also give you riches, possessions, and honor, such as none of the kings who had who were before you, and none after you shall have the like. So Solomon came from the high place at Gibeon, from, the, from before the tent of meeting to Jerusalem, and he reigned over Israel. Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen, whom he stationed in the chariot cities and with the king in Jerusalem. And the king made silver and gold as common as Jerusalem in Jerusalem as stone, and he made cedar as plentiful as, sycamore of, as the sycamore of the Shephala. And Solomon's import of horses was from Egypt to Q, and the king's traders would buy them from Q for a price. They imported a chariot from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. Likewise, through them, these were exported to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Syria. Romans 14. As for one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should, should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he give, gives thanks to, the, to God, while the one who abstains abstains in honor to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, 
that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, who, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. Therefore let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or hindrance in the way of a brother. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it is unclean. For if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. By what you eat, do not destroy the one whom Christ di for whom Christ died. So do not let what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Do not, for the sake of food, destroy the works, the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make another stumble by what he eats. It is good not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything that causes your brother to stumble. The faith that you have keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because the eating is not from faith. From whatever, for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. Psalm 18, 1 through 24. To the choir master, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who addressed the words of this song to the Lord on the day when the Lord delivered him from the hands of all his enemies. And from the hands of Saul, he said, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. For his temple, he heard, from his temple, he heard my voice, and me, my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He came swiftly on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him. Thick clouds, dark with water. Out of the brightness before him, hailstones and coals of fire broke through his clouds. The Lord also thundered in the heavens. And the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. And he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed forth lightnings and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundations of the world were laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils, he sent from on high. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He rescued me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me into a broad place and rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his rules were before me and his statutes I did not put away from me. I was blameless before him and I kept myself from my guilt. So the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. Proverbs, excuse me, Proverbs 19, 24 and 25. The sluggard buries his hands in the dish and will not even bring it back to his mouth. Strike a scoffer and the simple will learn prudence. Reprove a man of understanding and he will gain knowledge. All right. Uh, next reading will be July 20th, 2 Chronicles 2, 3 and 4. Romans 15, 1 through 13, Psalm 18, 25 through 50, 
and Proverbs 19, 26. So I'll see you. Uh, I believe I'll read it in just a moment. So we'll catch up and finally be back on track after a week of falling a bit behind. Thanks for reading with me.